Welcome to the Life of a Makeup Artist podcast, a beauty podcast that gives you a real insider look with no filters on how artists really live. The Life of a Makeup Artist digs deeper to inspire, educate, and elevate. From beauty talk to business chats and interviews with industry insiders, I will also share my experience as a Caribbean woman living and working in New York City and take you on the journey I'm on and share the stories of the people I meet along the way. I'm your host, Jalisa Jaikaran, makeup artist and beauty influencer. Finances as a freelancer. It could be scary. It could be... Hmm... Something that most people might not want to talk about, but that is exactly what we're talking about today. If you're going to be a fully functioning and successful freelancer, it's imperative to have your finances in order. I've been living in New York for a total of six years now, and when I first moved here, I was working a full-time job, and it was very important to me to understand credit and all these things because where I came from... We don't necessarily have that kind of system. It's more of a, do you have the money or or not? Nah? <laughs> Here's the thing though. There is a culture that is perpetuated on the internet to quit your job, start a business, live your best life. But what many fail to realize is that that same job is what you can use to fuel your dreams while you work behind the scenes. I asked for the advice of so many people doing it before me, and I got so many different answers. I kind of wanted to pick apart what worked for me and anchor myself into being a smart freelancer. You know when you get a nice, cute day rate and you feel rich, rich, but then there might be days, maybe weeks that might go by where you're just not that busy. And hey, I like to eat nice things. I like to go to nice places. So what are we going to do about this, Willis? So before we get into the nitty gritty of things, I must say that these tips have worked for me then and has continuously worked for me in my years of being a freelance artist. I want to share these things with you because I know the struggle. I know how it feels. And this is my first tip. So if you have a full-time job and there is a 401k available, make use of it. I was at Mac at the time and it was franchise owned so it's a bit different but I had the opportunity to have a 401k and some of you might not know what that is but basically it is a retirement savings plan sponsored by your employer. So essentially you kind of have a lump sum of money saved for you tax free. Now, for me, one of the major resources that I learned from was a book called The Money Book for the Young, Broke, and Fabulous by Susie Orman. I did my research and I found out that my company would match the same amount that I was saving. So there's a thing called matching. I'm not going to give you a whole finance lesson. I'm not an expert by any means, but I've done my research. So your company can match exactly what you're um, giving in the account. So let's say they have, they're giving you 5%, but they'll match up to 7%. But I didn't even know that my 401k existed before I read this book. So I literally had money in the bank and I did not know my company was matching. So every few months I would go in and add a percent, see how I would do with my, you know, if that, if I can still be okay, then go add like another 2% and just try and save as much as I could because this was tax-free saving. So that was really awesome. So if you have the opportunity to have a 401k, you know, some of us might just be doing side jobs. Some of us might have full-time jobs still. If you have a 401k, definitely make use of it while you're there. The next one is Get a credit card and use it wisely. Now, coming into New York um, or anywhere in the U.S. you might be, credit is kind of everything. Um, There is a Facebook group called Dream Catchers, and it's run by an amazing woman. Her name is Tiffany the Budgetista. And I would suggest that you can go over there if you need like money management tips and stuff because that's where I've learned a lot. And if you have listened to the last episode, LB mentioned that, you know, she's going on there. Um, she's now the sole breadwinner in her household. And it's not just about uh, learning how to manage yourself sometimes. You have to manage 
your money for other people, whether it be children, whether it be parents, whatever it is. So you have to learn to manage your money. Uh, and on another note, it's kind of unfortunate that these three numbers kind of run your life. If you want to get a car, if you want to get an apartment, if you want to breathe, they want to know your credit score. It's kind of crazy because it's not always the same for everyone. Some people have student loans, um, diff all types of different situations. Um, and that's where the Budget Nista Dream Catchers group came in so handy for, for me to just learn about all these different things. And I also like Dave Ramsey as a resource. Um, so if you're looking for specific advice or you have like school loans and you need to like figure that out, I would say to check out those two resources. And it definitely took me years to build my credit score to where I wanted to be. I had a very small credit card when I first started and paid down the minimum and just grew from there. It's definitely something that it that isn't always easy, but it's doable. Now the next one is I like to use robo advisors um, in addition to apps. Now Robo advisors are pretty much like online banks like um, Wealthfront and Betterment. I use Betterment and I actually had a conversation with, um, now I went with Betterment because somebody that works in finance recommended it to me. I spoke with somebody else and he personally does not like robo advisors or apps or anything like that. I haven't had any issues with any of them. I actually I'm kind of obsessed because as a freelancer you always want to make sure that you have money somewhere like you have a little stash in the back and you're like all right if ish goes down we good so I appreciate these apps and these websites because you know obviously you want to make sure that these sites are secure and safe I don't use all of them but I do use a few of them and I'm going to tell you about it. So I have an app called Capital and Capital is with a Q. Now Capital, I really appreciate Capital actually because I had finally started saving my 30% off of all of my jobs and I was just feeling so proud of myself. And then I did my taxes. <laughs> and uh, luckily, you know, when I looked into that account, I had almost exactly what I needed to pay my taxes off. Had I not done that, I would have had to take in money out from other places that it needed to be in. Now, the thing is with capital and the reason why I love it is that you can literally have rules on any account. So if you say, you know what, I've been spending too much money on Starbucks. You can create a rule where you have a guilty pleasure that Starbucks is, you know, anytime I spend money on Starbucks, I save $10 in this account. Or if I spend, if I, for me, it's like Dorado's tacos. Like if I keep going to Dorado's tacos for those amazing shrimp tacos, um, I save, you know, $15 in this account. So the possibilities are kind of endless on capital, which I actually really, really like. Another one I've been using for specifically just for emergencies is Digit. And Digit kind of mirrors what a lot of banks do. They round up um, and they make it easy for you to save. They, they don't ever take money out of your account that you don't have. So if you have $5 in your account, they're not going to take $2. They're not going to take $5. They might not take any at all. So they there's balance protection and things like that. So like, and there's, and the best part of all of these apps is you can pause it anytime you want. So there are so many other options like Acorns, I, which I use, but that's kind of more of an investing app. Um, there's a ton of others. And um, like I mentioned earlier, if you're looking to try and start off these apps, you can look into the Bajanista group that I mentioned earlier. And in the show notes on the Life of a Makeup or Artist website, I will be leaving links to all of these things so you can check it out when you're like ready to get your life. And then you want to create a budget. Now, I think that some people think a budget is something that you have to explicitly live by every month or else it's over. And I have to disagree. I create budgets, but I don't follow them to a T. I use them more as a guideline because now that I have this budget, I know what my fixed expenses are. I know what I need for food. I know what I need for 
travel i know what i need for my rent and i think just knowing these things and knowing like okay this is the amount of money i need every month you're going to be negotiating better and we'll talk about that you know in our next point but you know exactly what you need to live and if you are really bad with spending then i wouldn't even suggest the envelope method i've done it tons of times where you know like if $500 is your budget for the entire month for spending. You just keep that $500 in the envelope and you spend from there and there only. And uh, I've used things like that before. I actually f find it kind of fun. But, you know, you can try different things and see what sticks for you. And finally, charge what you're worth. You can't expect to save, invest, and do all these great things if your rates have been the same for years. When we look at makeup companies, or any company for that fact, you'd see that the price of product goes up a little each year, and sometimes with less product in them. You have to evaluate your market. You have to know what's going on. Know the cost of things. Are they reflecting in your rate, or are you operating at a loss? Your rent goes up, those brow pencils went up, so I think your rates could go up too. Also, check in with your peers and see what they're charging. Make sure you're not undercutting the people around you and selling yourself short. It's nice that I can always send a text to a friend and be like, hey, what do you think about this rate? Hey, what do you charge? It's nice to have that open conversation and it's very important to have that open conversation with your peers to make sure that we're all playing on the same level. And I know, I know, sometimes it's hard and you just want to do whatever comes with a paycheck. Granted, we all make those decisions sometimes, but if you're constantly leaving money on the table, then this is probably not something you should be doing as a career. And a great way to keep track of it all is an app that I use called invoice to go invoice to go is an invoicing app that makes it super easy to keep track of all your clients and all your payments. You can customize it. I put my logo there. I can choose the pay period. I can add pictures. I can even put payment options in the app itself. Before I used to use PDFs and I used to just change the number manually. And trust me, sometimes I used to just get confused and like forget what number it is, make up numbers, just be like, ah, oh, just pick a number out of a hat. It was just a mess. It was a mess. So now that I use invoice to go, I'm, I feel, you know, better because now I can just log on to one place. I can see all the money that I'm bringing in. I can compare quarters. I can see last year to this year. I can pull reports for my taxes. It's pretty, it's pretty good. I know there's a lot of apps available. Um, a lot of my freelance friends recommend other apps, but I have been using invoice to go for maybe about over two years now, and I've been really, really loving it. So you can check that out as well. And don't forget, you can get free money by using my invite to any of the apps mentioned in this episode. Yes, I said free. You'll find that in the show notes on the lifeofamakeupartist.com. I really hope that these tips has helped you. Maybe you already know all the things and this was just a nice reminder. But what I really want to drive home is that us as freelancers, we're the captains of our own ship. And it's up to us if we sink or sail. If this episode has helped you, share it with a friend. And we'll be back next week.